Uh, hello, good afternoon. Um, thank you for, for coming here and assisting to this uh, seminar uh, regarding uh, trade unions and migration and diversity. Um, my name is Ada Hernandez Luis. I'm a double, de uh, double degree graduate from this university in law and global studies. And I'm currently working as a project technician in Fundació Axar. Um, first of all, I wanted to apologize because initially it was announced that it was going to be Carlos Campuzano, the president of the foundation that will chair this uh, seminar, but he had a last minute appointment so he couldn't, he couldn't come and ask me to do it instead. But fortunately we have here two brilliant speakers which will enlighten us in this, in this interesting topic of trade unions and how they deal with migration and with diversity in, in our society. But before giving the floor to them, I will briefly introduce the work of the organization I work in, uh, Fundacio Axar, in case any of you is, is interested. So the Axar Foundation has been uh, 17 years working in the refugee, asylum and immigration sectors and has been successfully carrying out and implementing projects, both at the local and international level. And currently, um, our main projects revolve on the one hand on research and investigation on the field of migra migration. And our biggest goal in this field is to establish an observatory uh, of um, migration and migration dynamics for Catalonia. So soon uh, we will publish um, a report on the state of migration in Catalonia. So we encourage you to read it once it's published and it's um, uploaded in our social media platforms and, and website. And on the other hand, we also do formative courses. Uh, last autumn, we did a yearly course on asylum law and refugee law, and it will restart next September. So you're also invited to, to check it out. And lastly, we also do uh, informative sessions with, with a, a specialist lawyer on the, on the topic for asylum applicants and immigrants um, to help them with, with the situation and to give them legal advice. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce the, um, the speakers for today's session. Mm -hmm. uh, on my right side, I have Mariana Isla. She's the director of the AMIC Association, which stands for the Association for Mutual Help of Immigrants of Catalonia. And she's the head of the international area of UGT. She holds a degree in psychology and she immigrated to Spain 20 years ago in order to do a master's degree in psychology, applied to education at the Complutense University of Madrid. Um, she also has 18 years of experience working on migration issues and currently she is also an immigration advisor and part of the organization's team of trainers. Uh, welcome, Mariana. Thank you. Thank you. And on my left side, I have Anna Tomas Kotz. Uh, she is a lawyer licensed in law by this house, by UPF, with a specialization in immigration law. And she's done a master's degree in international human rights law in the Maastricht University. And she has developed her professional career in the private sector for some years and is currently working as an advisor at the CITE, which stands for the Information Center for Foreign Workers of Commission Obreras. And she's also the CIT coordinator at the Care Service for Immigrants, Emigrants and Refugees of Barcelona City Council. Welcome, Anna. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So now uh, let's get to, to the seminar and to the real content of this session. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask our speakers to introduce a little bit uh, to us the history of the trade unions they represent, since they are the biggest trade unions and the main trade unions in, in Catalonia. So, um, Marianne, if you want to start telling us a little bit about the, um, the history and origins of, of UGT. Okay, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the invitation, the Foundation Aska, Aksar, and the opportunity to explain to you the job that we make here in Catalonia. Um, the origin of the UGT, the, the, the trade union where I work, is very close, closely linked to migration. In fact, the UGT was founded in Barcelona uh, by a foreign, a Galician typographer called Pablo Iglesias, 
in 1988, year in which the Universal Exhibition was held in Barcelona. This exhibition created jobs for thousands of people, many of whom came from other places in Spain, and with it, the need to organize and defend the interests of workers. Catalonia has historically been a highly industrialized place, textile companies, car factories, etc., which has turned it into a market that receives workforce, first from internal and later external. Between the years 40 and 76, during the Franco era, in Spain, there was only one legal and authorized union organization known as the Vertical Union. The UGT, as well as the rest of the unions, was banned, and its members worked for 40 years from clandestinity and exile. And in 77, 1977, during the transition period, it was legalized again, the, the, the trade union. The link between trade unions and migration in countries like Spain, Italy, or France, for example, is very close because in my, uh, migration laws are closely linked to the need of the labor markets. And for this reason, the European Union, for example, does not have a common migration policy, but do they have common trade, on, uh, common trade or agricultural policies? Because the labor markets between European countries is very different. An example of this is that the Spanish, French, and Italian trade unions are the only ones in Europe that have in migration departments. <clears throat> the growing concern about migration at the early 90s encouraged several UGT Catalonia workers and foreign citizens to collaborate with a trade union in setting up an association dedicated to providing social and legal support in migration matters. Our association, AMIC, was born in 1993 inside the UGT of Catalonia with the aim of responding to the needs of the growing group of foreign workers in our market. And since then we have worked together with a trade union to achieve full social labor and political integration of immigrants. AMIC opened its first office in, in the city of Barcelona and currently has more than 30, 30 services point in Catalonia. Over the years, the services that the association provides and the role it plays have been changing and adapting to new needs, uh, to changes in migration flows, and especially to the change in the concept of migration as a global and normalized fact. From the UGT and especially from AMIC, we work from an egalitarian perspective, respect to diversity, and from the normalization of migration, because for us, foreign people are more than workers. So our services are carry out mainly at the UGT uh, headquarters. From this office, many users are referred to the services of the UGT of Catalonia, which is why AMIC, the association where I work, becomes the entry for many foreigners to join the trade union. For example, currently 9% of, of the affiliates of the UGT are uh, foreigners. About our collaboration in task of the UGT of Catalonia, AMIC participates very actively in all protest acts uh, that, being, that, that, that are organized by the union. So this participation is reflected not only with the presence of uh, AMIC workers, but also with the convening of these acts by various groups, especially immigrant entities, e, uh, which, with whom AMIC maintains a regular relationship. We usually collaborate with the preparation of documents and press release that contain political position on legislative proposals, government decisions, etc. And AMIC also collaborate with UGT in the field of union elections, supporting electoral process in companies, as well as organizing assemblies and workers' meetings. Regarding to our daily work in the association, AMIC carry out three types of actions: individual services training and campaigns of denunciation and claims. In relation to our individual services, AMIC has agreements and contracts with different administrations to provide a free specialized immigration service to the population. We have a team of 18 people who offer this service in 35 
Catalan municipalities and give attention to around 2,000 people annually. The service consists of giving personalized and free attention about migration law, how to obtain the or renew in the residence the residence cards, the Spanish nationality, etc. The recognition of studies, how to obtain the academic recognition of the studies carried out in other countries. Training orientation, it means which, which are the real possibilities depending on previous study and in the administrative situation to start or continue studies. Accreditation of competences, it means how to obtain an academic and official recognition of work experience or non-formal training. And uh, finally, job search. I mean, which, uh, what is the best way to find a job here in Spain? Um, if we talk about immigration law, we offer advisory services in everything related to the legal status of people. Curiously, one of the majority nationalities in our attention is the Spanish one because most of these people are already nationalized. So there are uh, immigrants nationalized. But the important thing here is that it shows that services like ours are still necessary even to them. In most cases, because immigration, uh, migration process does not end when the person has acquired the maximum status at the legal level, which could be nationalization, but continues through the relatives. So we speak of a permanent and extensible migration progress process. Um, an important aspect of our work in this area is that we have a close relationship with the immigration offices, which allows us to be updated and have firsthand information on the internal instructions, which are usually not public, that they use to develop the law. If we talk about recognition of studies, the training orientation and the accreditation of experience, from AMIC and UGT, we firmly believe in the academic and the work potential that foreigners bring to our society and to our labor, labor market. It is well known that foreigners tend to hold low skills jobs and that many of them are rather overqualified for the tasks that they perform. So these services have the objective of helping people to develop professionally and academically with all the implications that it means in integration and personal satisfaction, but also to diversify and enrich our job market through international experience. Uh, labor integration for someone who doesn't know the market is very difficult. So we try to guide people so they can have as much information as possible about aspects such as the sectors with the best job, with the best job offer, the way to seek employment, the best way to make a CV, a cover letter or an interview, etc. No? And regarding training, AMIC developed different training actions addressed to citizens in general and also to technicians who work in public administration and who do their functions, they are continuous in contact with migration, migrant population. And training is about different topics of migrations and work. On one hand, we offer informative talks about specific topics. For example, like I said before, how to obtain the residence card, how to renew it, or how to apply for the nationality, Spanish nationality. No? Um, and in the other hand, the first reception service that is included in the Catalan reception law is configured as a set of resources, equipment, projects, and programs aimed to guarantee the initial training and information needs of immigrants and returnees. And in relation to training, uh, the objectives are the linguistic competence in Catalan and Spanish that is called module A, the labor market knowledge that is called module B, and knowledge of Catalan society and its legal framework that is called Module C. So in this context, the Catalan Directorate General of Immigration and the social actors worked together in 2015 to define the pedagogical concretion of the contents of the different modules that constitute the first reception services. 
So Amig, with the endorsement of 25 years of experience advising and conducting training in, in, in immigration and in social labor matters, become one of the pioneer entities and reference teaching the Module B about labor market. Commissiones Obreras, too, that we work together. As part of the first reception services uh, service in several Catalan municipalities, and later this training offer was extended to Module C. Um, the Module B focus on the transmission of knowledge that allows students to face a new job market different from the original country. The students acquire the, necess the necessary labor and training skills to help them decide their own professional path so that, the, so that work becomes an element of integration into the society where they reside. And the Model C is focused on acquiring knowledge of history and institution of the whole society, in this case, from Catalonia. So the integration of these persons are in, in the new country is a successful. And last but not least, AMIG, together with UGT, works for the assertion of foreign rights through different awareness campaigns and denouncement of violation of rights. For example, among the most important campaigns we have been working for many years uh, is the foreigners' voting rights. We denounce into situations of labor exploitation or demanding the rectification of the Convention 189 for domestic workers of the International Labor Organization. In most of these campaigns, we have had the institutional support of, this, of different political parties too. So finally, the UGT prioritized the union organization of foreign workers, promoting their affiliation and participation, facilitating access to union training and union responsibilities, which help their full integration. It also undertakes to contribute to greater intercultural and anti racist awareness among members, maintaining currently collaboration with immigrants association, especially with AMIC. So in general, we could say that AMIC works in network with many other entities and unions in Catalonia, and obviously the collaboration with the UGT is continuous and close. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mariana. I'm sure it's a lot of information and, and you will have questions. But we can pause maybe at the end or or maybe the, the session is kind of organized in four big topics so maybe at the end of each topic if you have any question you can of course raise your hand and i'm sure our speakers will be more than glad to answer so um anna uh, could you explain us a little bit uh, more or less what uh, what's the equivalent uh, in uh, commissions obreras for what uh, Marianne explained about the history and origins of, of Commission Obreras and especially the, um, the CIP and Yalsayer and the places you, you work at, what's the concrete job they're, they're doing right now? Okay. okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, respect or in, in regards with um, the origin of Commission Obreras, okay. The interest, uh, first of all, it's important to, to highlight um, before then anything else that the interest and sensitivity of Comisiones Obreras of Catalonia uh, for the issues related to immigration can be found in its, in its founding principles and also runs in parallel uh, to the evolution of a presence of non-native workers in, in our country and also the evolution of immigration laws who which have in turn been deeply questioned by our organization. Commissiones Obreras of Catalonia was created in 1964 during the Franco's dictatorship. And its creation involved workers from Catalonia, born in Catalonia, and other from other Spanish territories who had emigrated to Catalonia uh, in that decade. So the migratory phenomenon uh, is part of the genome of the union since its uh, beginning. In 1986, as a result of the enactment of the um, first immigration law in, Sp in Spain the, that was approved in 1985, Comisiones Obreras of Catalonia created the Information Center for Foreign Workers, uh, CITE, I will say from now on CITE, okay, it's our organization, CITE in, in Spanish, with the aim of promoting, as it was stated in the trade union's publication, Lucha Obrera, 
all what I will read now, okay? Because I think it's important to, to, to take this into account. So we, it was created with the aim to promote the integration of non-native workers, preventing the exclusion of ethnic minorities, promoting their professional training, improving their quality of life during their stay in our country, as well as promoting a specific studies and research, which from a sociological perspective, will bring us closer to an objective knowledge of the influence of the role of foreign workers in the Catalan society as a whole. The first thing it should be noted is that this definition clearly reflects, first of all, the conception of immigration in those years as a really uh, temporary phenomenon, not a, a long time phenomenon, but a temporary phenom phenomenon. But at the same time, this definition already shows the, the defining lines of what would become the, the trade union's policy in relation to migration. In short, we can say that CITE over the last 30 years has been a central element in the process of ionization of immigration. And for a long time, it took over the bulk of the work in this area. Subsequently, it gradually focused on its current attributions. So nowadays is uh, the most instrument or the main instrument of the trade union for direct intervention with immigration in Catalonia. Uh, regarding the CITE tasks nowadays, so what is, what is doing CITE uh, nowadays? So first of all, CITE offers a free legal advice and guidance on immigration laws in Spain and carries out also uh, the processing of different, the different administrative procedures. So submitting applications to Oficina de Extranjería of Barcelona, such as work permits, residence permits, uh, family reunification, and all different types of residence and work permits. Also provides information uh, on different aspects uh, important uh, for, for migrants in order to, uh, so that they get the knowledge to know the environment where, where they arrive, and also so to promote their autonomy and also in, in their social integration. On the other hand, also, um, we, we also, uh, another thing that we do is assessing people the, who are interested in finding a job opportunity in other European Union countries. So once they are here already, we are assessing them uh, to uh, the requirements they need and also what, what they need to comply with in order to uh, find a job or uh, get a residence permit in other European Union countries. This involvement in, the, in this international mobility, it's one of the Titer's, Titer's desires, okay? And also to strengthen its, its uh, presence in the European Union sphere. And we participate also in the Union Migrant Net Network, that is an advisory service for migrants linked to, the, to different European Union uh, trade unions organizations. Also, another important task uh, that already my uh, colleague has, uh, has talked about is that since last year, we, are, we started teaching the modules, okay? Uh, we are teaching modules B, uh, B and C, um, that they are the, the courses um, established by the, by, the, um, uh, by the Generalitat, okay, in, in the reception law, okay? So it's important also because uh, this, this type of courses uh, they have the aim to, to, to do a training, okay, and to ensure that participants have basic knowledge on legislation and social labor field, understand also how the labor market in Catalonia works, know their basic rights, okay, and duties uh, in an employment relationship. So it's really important uh, as the first uh, welcome uh, for migrants when they arrive in our country. Also, another thing it is also doing nowadays is providing support to municipal te technicians of the different municipalities with which we have signed agreements, okay, in, on immigration matters. And also we carry out different informative activities uh, on different aspects related to, to the migratory phenomenon, okay? For example, one of these activities that we, we have done and we can highlight is uh, a workshop that we did against stereotype, stereotype types and prejudices. It's called Desmontan Prejudices. And it received a, a, a award in 2015 
uh, because uh, they said that that initiative, it was uh, really important in favor of the integration of Catalan citizens of migrant origin, okay? All these activities, these different type of activities that we are doing in TITE is carried out in a, or from the 33 offices that we have uh, distributed uh, throughout Catalonia, which uh, are a really reception or is a really reception network, okay, for the immigrant population that arrives or is settled in our, in our country. Um, important also to, to note that the 69% of people attended in 2021 uh, in our offices, uh, where all, uh, all the 69% of people were in a regular administrative status, which means that most of the people that we that is attended by CITE has an irregular administrative status. So what the main procedures that we do is um, all the applications to obtain a residence permit. Perfect, thank you so much, Anna. Um, okay, so uh, you both have mentioned the, the origins and how uh, your respective trade unions were born. Um, so, uh, especially in the case of uh, UGT, which was created before um, the, let's say, the, Frank, the Francoist era, and also with the um, antecedents of, of the rest of, of trade unions, um, how did your trade unions lift 40 years of, of dictatorship? What kind of resistance was posed from affiliates or from people who was uh, in a way related or um, involved in, in trade unions? What, and I guess it was really different in the beginning of the dictatorship than in the later years, but I don't know if you have something to say more or less about what what was going on in those years? Um, during all that, all those years, well, in fact, as I said before, all the trade unions were banned. So the the people of, from UGT was working from clandestinity or exile. I mean, they were working in living in other countries or hide. And History says that some of them were also infiltrated in this trade union that was the trade union of the, of the regime, no, Franco, that, that I said before, the, the vertical union. It's difficult to say it uh, certainly because there are no proofs, but the work that the, the, our trade union did dur during those years was very little in the sense, in the sense that little because uh, they, could, they couldn't make their job because if they did it, they were killed maybe or uh, expulsados <laughs> going throughout the country. In relation to Comisiones Obreras, it's, uh, it's uh, later, so it, it, it appeared later than, than, than UGT. So it appeared in the decade of the 60s, okay? So it was only one decade more and for the, the, the end of the Franco regime. But how it started, Comisiones Obreras, uh, it was in that way. So uh, some workers inside the inside the companies, they they were just creating some um, temporary commissions in order to solve some uh, small problems they had within the company. And um, after that, they solved the problem, so they disappeared. But after some years doing it like this, finally uh, they consolidated uh, a trade union. Okay. And this trade union was illegal, as, as my, my colleague said. So what they did is also they, start, they started participating in the Sindicato Vertical, okay, Vertical Trade Union, that was the unique trade union of the regime. And uh, from there, they started working uh, inside the, the, the regime uh, trade union. After this, with a, um, with a constitution, a Spanish constitution of 1978, then they were legalized and they could uh, start uh, working as a, as a legal uh, trade union. So I, I, I think Comisiones Obreras only had one, one decade, it was one decade with, with uh, Franco regime, and it was, uh, he, he tried to participate inside the, the Sindicato Vertical. Okay. Perfect, thank you so much. Um... So since the democratic transition and the legalization of, of trade unions, 
Um, there have been uh, different immigration waves uh, arriving in Catalonia and in terms of the arrival of non-native workforce it was uh, really significant and really it was a big impact on the on the labor market of Catalonia so what do you think were the different approaches that the trade unions have given have taken on these different immigration waves do you think it was really different in the 90s than nowadays or what do you think are the main the main changes that you have integrated in with this experience of migration um, the, the, the social acceptance of the labor nature of of immigration that has settled in spain in the recent years has facilitated a broad debate on the present and the future effects that this phenomenon generates before exposing the position of the Spanish unions regarding immigration, it is convenient to recall some general characteristics of the incorporation of immigrants into the Spanish labor market. In the first place, uh, it should be noted that irregularity at the beginning of the of their incorporation to work has been and continues to be the norm rather than the exception in the vital trajectory of immigrants in Spain, to the point that in some moments, half of the immigrants were in an irregular situation, with all the consequences that, that this implies on their rights and on, the, on a labor market that incorporates a high number of people in search, in search of employment, but without the possibility of being legally hired. So, and therefore in a position of a special weakness in front of the potential, the, the potential employers. This peculiarity of immigration in Spain share, shared with the rest of the countries of the South, Southern Europe has conditioned the <clears throat> position of the trade unions by placing the regulation of a state due to its effects on working conditions and the control of entries in the first place of their concerns and has formed the basic issues on which the position of the unions in this field has involved. The two biggest uh, Spanish unions, so UGT and Comisiones Obreras, have maintained a position very favorable to immigrants since the 1980s, expressed in terms of defending the interests and rights of immigrants and demanding that their situation must be regularized. So this position uh, has not changed. But the assessment of the impact of immigration has been modified, and this had consequences on their political demands. In general terms, it can be said that UGT has held since the mid, middle mid 90s a position on immigration in which consideration of the labor market, prevention of uh, over exploitation, and the underground economy have uh, dominated. Thank you so much, um, Anna from Commission. What would you like to add? Yes. Um, well, Catalonia is, is a region of, of immigration. So since the decade of the uh, 50s, uh, immigration has been uh, the main demographic driver in, in Catalonia. And as I mentioned earlier, Commissions, Commissions Obreras of Catalonia was created by workers with different origins. Uh, that many uh, of the creators of the beginners uh, migrated to Catalonia from other regions of Spain. So this is the distinctive fact that uh, of Comisiones Obreras of Catalonia that has uh, resulted in immigration being one of, or uh, an inherent part of, 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 the, of the trade union. For all the, all the reasons, when the first immigration law was enacted in, in, in Spain in the decade of the uh, 80s, uh, immigration issues were already part and inherent part of, of, the, of the trade union. So it is really important to understand uh, the conception of immigration of, of our of the trade union. Already, uh, Cipriano, Cipriano Garcia, okay, was the, the founder of Comisiones Obreras of Catalonia. He was born in Castilla-La Mancha, emigrated to Catalonia in 1951, and he already stated in, in the decade of the 60s that any valid solution uh, to the national problem must begin by taking into account as a whole the workers who live, suffer, and struggle in Catalonia. It must take into account that those not born in Catalonia feel identified with the demands and needs of these people and united in the same endeavor. So interest 
in non-European Union migration in Catalonia began in the decade of the 80s, but immigration issues appeared already with the foundation of the, of the trade union. Uh, since the beginning, uh, see, since the creation, CITE uh, rejected the immigration laws enacted in, in 1985 and uh, because uh, CITE already in that time declared that they pushed uh, the non-native workers to, into irregularity and also to informal economy. Uh, it's also important to highlight that, that CITE, uh, when it was created in 1986, uh, only 2% of non-native workers or foreigners uh, were living in Spain. And there were, uh, in that time, 2 million uh, workers, Spaniards, living abroad. So in that time, the union already had a really a, 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 vision, a vision, a future vision of, of migration, because the, the percentage of, of migrants in Spain was really low in comparison with, with nowadays. And it was established that that organization, CITE, although uh, immigration was also seen as a temporary uh, phenomenon and not a, a long-term phenomenon. So uh, CITE understood also that this new immigration law diversified the rights uh, among non-native workers and native workers, okay, according if they had a regular um, status or a irregular status. And it was created with the aim of providing legal advice, free legal advice to those immigrants while taking also all the, all the union's immigration uh, work, okay? Over the time, this view of immigration as a temporary phenomenon has changed. And at the same time, the will also of the trade union to intervene uh, to improve the living conditions and social and labor integration of the migrant population in our country. And also it has the aim and the will to um, not only um, do task in order to, so, uh, so in terms of labor and social uh, rights, but also it uh, has the, the, um, the aim, okay, to have also like the unionizing all the, all the workers, okay, so in having them in the un union list, okay, and participating in union elections, and also uh, many of these non-native workers participate as union officers, and offices, officers, sorry, and leaders in, in, the, in the trade union. So it's important to highlight that um, the possibility to participation in the elections of the, of the trade union is for all uh, non-native workers that have a regular status, a regular administrative status, and they can also be candidates and, and participate. Think that it's not like this in, in, in other uh, electoral context. Um, Four percent nowadays of our union members are, uh, are non, they don't have a Spanish origin, but this percentage is not so real because many of the union members, they have obtained a Spanish citizenship afterwards, so um, it would be, it would be higher. Also, um, immigration is included uh, nowadays in the highest governing bodies of the trade union, especially in the territorial policy and migration department of the, of the union. And this, this department has three main areas of work nowadays. First thing, trade union intervention. So the, the, the aim to unionize all the, all the workers and uh, that they participate in the same conditions as Spaniards in, in, in the trade union. Also, all the institutional work, okay, with uh, public administrations and legislation, and finally, campaigns and mobilizations in order to promote uh, all the rights, social and, and labor rights of, of uh, non-native workers. So this consolidation of the immigration as a structural element of our society has progressively meant that the task entrusted to CITE have, have changed and have increasingly taking on the desire to intervene in many different areas or many different yes, areas that affect the immigrant population. Okay? In this sense, nowadays, these tasks um, are not only limited, uh, limited, as I told you, in providing free advice, free legal advice to immigration laws, uh, to immigration regarding immigration laws, or the management uh, of the different administrative procedures, but also uh, we are um, uh, doing uh, different activities uh, to do a, like a, a comprehensive, a, a really a complete action plan for the social integration of immigrants that guarantees the coexistence and the social cohesion in, in Catalonia. Um, 
that would be all. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, so you kind of answered this question already, but I wanted to introduce the, the concept here of internationalism and the solidarity between workers at the international level in, in the sense that you were commenting that a worker is a worker everywhere and should be treated with the same rights. Um, so do you think that immigration is seen and dealt with more as a threat to native workforce, which is uh, sometimes the like the idea of a sector of the population or some um, maybe far right groups that see it as a, as a threat to, to, to jobs or as an opportunity to promote internationalism and not only increase productivity like in, in, in capitalist terms, but also to promote this uh, solidarity between workers and to increase diversity and to, yes, basically to, to, to work together to, towards this end. What, what is your opinion? Obviously, it depends on the point of view of, you, or no, of, of the person or of that institution or even of the parties. Um, we think that immigration is opportunity. I mean, um, as I said before, most of the immigrants that are here in, living in our country, for example, have um, uh, studies, university studies, degree studies and the other country, and they're working here in a low level jobs because they don't find the, the opportunity, maybe because they don't know how, or maybe because their sta legal status um, doesn't leave them to, to ac acquire to the jobs that they deserve, no? But um, having a person coming from another country with all the experience and the languages and all that that means is very en en enriched for the, for the company or for the involvement of the job. We have um, an agreement, a collaboration. We, may, we have a collaboration with an intercolegial de Barcelona that it means that all the professionals, colegios, sería colegios profesionales, professionals apart. Does it has sense for you? No? Professional apart. Professional associations. For example, lawyers, the colegio de abogados de Barcelona, okay? So we have a, an agreement with them. We work in collaboration with them because as we do this, we, we bring this service for recognition of studies. What we do is to put in link the person with the, uh, of the, un with the union of his or her job. So the person can receive a first hand information about how to develop professionally here in Spain in this career or this job in concreto. Okay, so it's very interesting to see not only how it's very good for the people so they can find a job. Maybe if, if you are a lawyer and you cannot work as a lawyer because you don't have that recognition of the degree, but at least this link, what led, led them is to find a job related with, with law. Okay, for example, in a, in, in, in a buffet from lawyers, etc. But also on the other hand, is um, very interesting seeing how the, the labor market receives these people with, uh, with happiness. It means because they have no new experiences that they don't have here and they have a point of view maybe of the career or how to develop this career in, in, a, in a way, in a different way. So uh, we think interculturalism is an opportunity, obviously. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Anna. What, what's your per perspective on it? Yes, I, I think, as, as I already explained it in the beginning, um, that um, our uh, trade union, Commission de Sobreras, um, since the beginning has uh, the perspective or has had the perspective of uh, being a general national uh, trade union that uh, created by many persons of people from many different origins. So it really has uh, always uh, taken the, this per perspective of being a um, uh, trade union for, for all different, so for fighting for the, for the rights of all workers, uh, 
mm. dependent on the state origin. So it really, I think it's a possibility or an opportunity, uh, the perspective of Commission of Soberanos, opportunity to fight for, for, the, for the rights of the workers and adapting in the different times that we have. So nowadays uh, we are focusing more on, for example, a domestic workers because it's one of the uh, most uh, on the sectors where the there are more workers that they are from a non-native, uh, that they are not native, and that they are suffering maybe more labor exploitation. So I think it's uh, we always think that is an opportunity to fight for the for the rights for for all for workers, uh, not matter where they are from. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if regarding this first uh, topic of the the role of Catalan trade unions at the arrival of uh, waves of immigration or non-native workers. If you have any question about what um, the speakers have said or maybe a point that wasn't clear. Yep. Yes, nowadays, since uh, for so many years, they did not have a, or they did not start a general regularization in Spain. Okay, and nowadays there are different procedures uh, established in the in the immigration law. Okay, and all the people that they are living here in a regular uh, status, they need to comply with all the requirements of one of the uh, of the uh, procedures in order to obtain uh, a residence permit. Um, it's true that, uh, for example, uh, Commission of Obreras thinks, uh, or the position that we have is that uh, the immigration law is really, um, so it's not flexible and it, they should have more, more uh, flexible uh, conditions, or, okay, it should be more flexible in order to uh, be able to, first thing, uh, more people that they are in Spain now in a irregular situation, though, so that they can obtain a, a, a residence permit and also on the other way also to maintain uh, this 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 administrative situation because it's really difficult sometimes to keep it once you already got it after so many years then it's really difficult to keep it because the requirements also to renew your residence permit are really difficult so all these campaigns of legalization yeah i think are uh, it's um, yes we are in the same I would say we have the same perspective also, okay? So we, we, we have also many demands and we think that uh, it's very important to, to, to make a modification or reform of, of our immigration laws in order to, that they are, uh, so that we can have better rights for all those immigrants and also that they have access to labor market. For example, uh, now uh, this week, the Commission of Migration of SOC, okay, uh, Servicio de Ocupación uh, of Catalonia, uh, have uh, said that they, they need workers uh, from, from, for hospitals and so sanitary workers, and they want to start procedures uh, in other, uh, so to start the procedures to, to get these workers from other countries. It's called contratación en origen. So, uh, um, co uh, have a job offer, but for uh, for a person who lives outside of Spain. No? And what we say is, there are many people that they are here in Spain already living nowadays. Many they have this this type of, of studies, so they could work, but maybe they could not uh, change their studies into so uh, here in in Spain, or maybe they don't have a work permit, but they are living here for so many time. So it's really important to um, maybe first <laughs> make this, these changes here and use or in, make access or, or allow the access to the to market, to the labor market from people that they are already living here and not trying to do new procedures to people that they are already, uh, now in their countries of origin. So it's really important to, we think that it's important to, to start this. Would you like to add something to the question? Or? I am agree with Anna because, uh, for example, UGT and AMIG um, 
we we have a, a an immigration law is, is uh, our law is from the uh, 2000 from the year 2000 so it means that it's very antiquated and it's a law that is absolutely vinculated with a uh, labor labor situation of people so the market the labor market in which this law was created it has nothing to do with uh, with our actual uh, labor market so what we need is a flexibilization of the law to adequate the, re uh, the, re the requisites to the, the new situation. But we don't think that this law has to disappear, or, no? because there are many people that says, uh, eliminemos la ley de extranjería. We don't, we don't think that we should make disappear the law. We only have to adapt it to the new reality. Perfect, thank you. Um, was there any question? I can, I can tell you that, well, uh, what we can influence is in, for example, we are part of uh, some commissions uh, that uh, we participate in some co legislative commissions. So the only thing we could uh, participate in that sense is in giving some um, tips or things. Uh, so what it could be better, uh, you know, but, um, in that sense, we, we cannot, we don't have access, direct access because we can only, we only work for people that they are already here, but to obtain a visa, you, you mean to obtain a visa once you are in your country of origin and you want to come to Spain. I understand is, is this what you mean. Like, the only... I think it's only this, this in this way. I, I don't yeah, the, the problem with visa like students is that it's something that is managed on, the, on your original country. So it means it depends on the embassy of Spain. So uh, you must think that we are uh, trade unions in Catalonia. So we cannot, we are not representative of all the UGT of Spain. So this kind of stuff, for example, is management since they were from the UGT in Madrid, that it's called La Confederal. The, and they are uh, the that is a part of the UJT that has a re relationship with embassies and other uh, governments levels that we don't have. But for example, for people who make uh, who ask for the permissions here in Spain, because also students uh, with some requ requires, but some, uh, some students can get the visa here in Spain. Okay, so in this case, for example, when the competence is in the Oficina de Extranjería from Barcelona, there we, of course, we have some kind of contact with them. So we can go to the Oficina de Extranjería and tell them, hey, what's happening with this file, for example, no? Or, or please, could you tell me what's the problem with this file if it's not going on? Or, But in embassies, that is kind of impossible for us because it's not our competences or our local uh, ambit of, of work. Um, was there another question?
the network of associations that work here in Catalonia giving this legal advice is huge. So there are a lot of associations, but they also are a lot of uh, gestorias, um, buffets have lawyers, right. private lawyers that do it, okay? Uh, our services are free. We inform, we advise, we uh, check up all the papers. I mean, and every, all of this process is, is for free because we have the support of the administrations. For example, LAMIC and CITE too. Um, our incomes are from the administration, Generalitat de Catalunya, uh, Barcelona's counseling, Diputació de Barcelona. Okay, so uh, our services in this, in this sense are, are free. If there is enough, no, <laughs> there is not. We see our, around 2000 people every year. It's a lot of people. And in some offices, in, more, in, the, in most of our offices, if you want an appointment, maybe you have to wait one month, two months, depends, okay? So there is not enough. And the services that we provide Mm, it's not only legal advice. I mean, you don't explain a person how to obtain the residence permit and that's it and it's so, no? There are a lot of more questions. There are a lot of more of mm, issues of the life of the person that comes out in the interview that you maybe you cannot resolve in that moment, but you have to make a, a, a job of send these people to the places that can help him in, I don't know, maybe food, maybe house. Uh, so the, the time that we're spending every visit is, is very big. And in most of the cases, it's not, not enough what we have. I would add on, on, only that I agree that it's, it, they are really busy, these, these services. Uh, there's always more and more demand. Uh, for example, in Sayer Barcelona, we are doing their uh, legal, free legal assessment. Uh, and we always, we have two months more or less of uh, waiting. You have to wait and this, <laughs> from when you call until when you will be able to, to go there and, and get a, an appointment with a lawyer. So more or less two months, okay? So they are really, they are really busy, but I think they are doing an important, it's an important, really important service. And of course, there are also many other private uh, lawyers that they also work as well but it's a really, it's a huge, but it's always, there are always more and more demands of more. I don't know if it's, if it's important, I think it is. Um, when you work in, in this kind of, of um, procedures, there are a lot of papers that expires. For example, no, you have the antecedentes penales and it will expire in, in one or two weeks. And if you have to wait, one month or two <laughs> to, to get an appointment, it will, it will not be useful to, in that moment, no? So in that kind of cases, we don't make the person wait. So we look for a, um, no, a wake on for, a, on for a in, in the schedule so we can uh, attend him or her before, obviously. Okay, was there another question there? There are no agreements between countries to regular, regularize people. I mean, uh, yeah, that's can you repeat it, please? It's easier in the cultural sense. Yeah. I mean, the first, uh, the, the, the biggest nationalities here in, in Spain, if we put them all together, are from Latin America. And 
maybe 80% of the women that are working in domestic jobs um, that are from other countries are from countries from Latin America. <laughs> so domestic wars are basically from Latin America, especially Honduras, El Salvador, and from Filipinas too. Okay. Um, a person coming from Latin America has to make the same for sure that any other person from any other part of the world to get the residence card. So it is the same. What is, uh, a, um, what is better when you come from Latin America is, is to obtain the Spanish citizenship. Because normally by, by law, a person has to wait until 10 years to get the Spanish citizenship, except all the countries that has been colonias from, Sp from Spain. So it means all Ibero-America, including also Brazil and Filipinos. Yes, um, I would also or only add that, for example, domestic uh, domestic service uh, work is really a, it's really a hard sector nowadays, as, as Mariana has, uh, has explained. Uh, most of the people working there are migrants, uh, they, are, they are women migrants, most of them from Latin America, and that they are in, that they are in a regular administrative status. In fact, this sector is, uh, or this type of, of profile of, of migrant is the, the first that we, the, the, um, the most we, we attend in, in our offices. Okay, and also this sector is one of the where you can find more labor exploitation. Okay, so it's true that maybe from uh, women from Latin America, they have, for example, the cultural, they have the, the language already, but uh, the sector where they usually work or where they are working the most, it's also a really, really hard sector. In Comisiones Obreras, they have created last year a special uh, department uh, only to, to work with domestic workers that they are in a irregular situation. No, it's a, it's a department only for, for domestic workers. It's not, yes, it's, a, it's, it's like, a, um, like a committee that uh, they work only for domestic workers. They do legal assessment. And once a, a week, they can come to our office in, in Barcelona and they, they can get free legal assessment. And also they are doing many like meetings with them and talking about the labor rights and following if there is any case of labor exploitation, what they can do to announce and everything. And there's the person who actually was who is, uh, leading this, this, uh, this work is the person who first she was uh, some years ago, she was also a domestic worker from, 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 uh, from Latin America. And now she is, she is, uh, doing all this, all this work. We are uh, from Commission Sobres and I think OGT also, we are working together in order to obtain the, um, so that the, the, um, OIT, um, the World Trade Organization, no, trade, no sorry, La OIT, La OIT, La OIT, um, World Labor uh, okay, Organization uh, that um, established, so that is established here in Spain, this, this, this agreement, okay? Because nowadays it's true that domestic workers, uh, they are, uh, they are le uh, so legal workers, they are, they, when they have a regular status, they, they can, uh, but they don't have the same benefits as the, the general workers, okay? For example, they cannot get a, a, a unemployment, uh, um, how do you say this? Um, Leave, okay, so not leave, sorry. Um, prestation for, sí. Exactly, exactly, for example. So yes, we are pushing from Commissioners Obreras and OGT also and different trade unions and many 
domestic workers associations that they are here in Barcelona and in other cities in Spain, uh, they are really fighting to obtain this, uh, this, this new regulation. Yes. Problem with domestic workers uh, is that they don't have a collective bargaining. bargaining no? A collective bargaining is a negotiation between workers representation, represented by the trade unions and employers represented by here in Spain is called patronal. It's a representation of the, of the employers. No? In the case of domestic workers, they don't have this patronal because they are not employers as, as well. No? So these workers are only under the Estatut uh, de los Trabajadores. It's called uh, Statut of Workers, the law, the general war law. But they have uh, a, um, another uh, problem here is not only that they have that the domestic workers and not only that they have less rights than other kind of, of, of workers, but they don't also they, they, they don't used to know this this uh, these rights don't, don't know the, the rights and don't know how to reclaim this these rights how to demand for example employers so uh, I think that the best uh, the best thing that we can do here not um, at the mass they uh, reclaim this uh, um, convenio from the OIT is to teach the workers to let them know what are the rights and how they can uh, make this, these rights to be available. It has been a it has been a sector I think in in, in Spain that most of the times it has been always in the informal economy so that they were not doing contracts and everything in general also for 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 native workers from from Spain so moreover uh, when it, there's a uh, it's a sector that most of workers nowadays are from uh, they are in, immigrants and that they don't have a regular uh, administrative status so it, it it makes it really difficult for, for, for all sides, for the side of the employer and also for the side of, of the of the worker. So it's it's really it's there's so much <laughs> much to do. So I think okay, one more last question because then we will go to next topic, which is related to to what we've been talking. So yeah, what was your question? Well, I think that we will do this in the la in the last do you want topic? in the last topic, I think, so we can maybe Yeah, this was actually the the last topic of the of the session, but I don't know if you prefer to discuss it now or or sure? yeah. So if you want to, sure. to go ahead. Yes, so it's true that in, in Catalonia we have two languages, two official languages, Spanish and Catalan. 
And um, of course, Spanish is the most useful, okay, uh, language uh, for migrants, especially for migrants from Latin America, but also for for the, for the whole, okay, population uh, of, of of migrants. But um, it's also important to, to know that uh, Catalan also has a really important element of integration, okay. So and it's also a language uh, that is important to to obtain and to to know uh, to access for the access of, to the market, so to the labor market, etc. So. Um, Commissiones Obreras established, uh, I think, in the decade of the 80s, uh, a linguistic service uh, to promote the use of Catalan in, in, in Catalonia here inside the trade union and also to promote its, its uh, use and also uh, knowledge among the, the union members and also migrants. So they are organizing many courses, Catalan courses, and doing many activities to promote the use and knowledge of Catalan language. Okay, it's so that sometimes it can be seen as a difficulty, so that you have both uh, languages and you have to 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 learn both. But I think it's also um, or for Commission Soberanas always has seen this uh, more as an opportunity and for more integration. Okay, more than a, a difficulty. What about the perspective from UGT uh, regarding language? Um, absolutely agree. I mean, learning Catalan for us, Catalan is a, is a tool of equality, of opportunity and of labor, um, labor insertion. I mean, a person living in Spain could live without a Catalan, but to get a real integration in society, uh, Catalan is very important. UGT, no, amic, the trade union has their own uh, school from languages and they they teach English, uh, English, no, sorry, they teach, uh, well, English too, <laughs> but, but they teach uh, Spanish and Catalan, okay? What we do like AMIC, such AMIC, is we collaborate with a linguistic service of the UGT, okay? Not teaching, but through projects that promote the use of the Catalan in our community. Uh, we have workshops, we, got, we have a, a blog in our web, etc. cetera, no? um, because for us it's very important. What you said is true, that there are not so many resources to study Spanish, for example. Here in Catalonia, you, it's, it's easier to find where to study Catalan no, and no Spanish, you know? but Spanish here is, mm, sobre todo, uh, in associations, people can get classes in school in, in associations. But the Catalan is a competence of the Dalgun uh, Sorcida Normalización Linguística, and it can be also studied in the adult schools.
I think that's kind of subjective. I mean, um, I'm not absolutely that I agree with what you have said. For example, um, the Spanish is much more spoken than Catalan in the uh, foreign community. I mean, there are a lot of more, more uh, immigrants that speak Spanish and do not speak Catalan, and they are not from Latin America, for example. No? To get that the certificate Adele, for example, is something that is needed for the Spanish citizenship. And when a person came from a country that is not from Latin America, must have 10 years living in Spain. So at the same time, I ask and I wonder why a person that is living here for 10 years at the last time goes to study officially the Spanish to get the Adele. I mean, that's something that it must be done and, and all the the, leave, the the life of the person here in Spain. Absolutely uh, agree that there are not enough resources of, in, in Spanish uh, courses, that there are much, much more in Catalan. But also I understand the need of protect a minority language that, that is, uh, that is a, a tool of integration. No? Uh, that's a reason also why the school, for example, here for for kids, a school is everything is in Catalan because the language must be protected. And that's something that we understand. And I'm telling you this, and I'm I not Catalan. <laughs> I mean, I have to learn Catalan too. But when you arrive to this stage of learning Catalan, it's like a step that you do in your social yeah. and cultural and labor process that improves your life here in Catalonia a lot, a lot more. I agree with uh, Mariana that um, learning Catalan improves uh, so or, or really helps uh, for the access of labor market, what we have talked about before. It's true what you are telling also, um, explaining us that it could be, it could happen this, that if you are not having access to the basic Oh, okay, courses to to get uh, the basic knowledge of Spanish, Catalan, everything. I think the, um, the key would be to have really access to Spanish and Catalan courses, of course, promoting the Catalan courses. And, um, and but of course, we, we, we need to, 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 so the institutions need to, to offer uh, for free this, this type of courses. Of course, always keeping in mind that we have to uh, promote Catalan as a, as a minority language. But uh, of course, also, um, we, we, we need to offer courses for, for, for a Spanish uh, language. It's true that I also agree with what Mariana said, most of uh, the migrant population here in Spain speaks Spanish. And the level that they ask for the DELE, it's A2, okay? I think it's an international level. So A, A2, it's a really low level, okay? Uh, so basic, I would say more than low basic level, okay, of Spanish. So um, it's true that sometimes people, they need it uh, when, when they have to, to do the exam, but but it's not that they ask a really high high level of, of, of a Spanish knowledge. Of course, but for this. It's difficult. <laughs> I think it's also yes. a bit out of the topic of trade unions. I mean, the uh, linguistic normalization and even the processes of acquire a nationality fall a bit out of the trade unions um, work that is more centered on, 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 on work and the labor market, even if it's related, as you, as you have explained. Um, I understand that we cannot offer here like uh, a plan to promote uh, the free learning of Spanish language for, for nationalization purposes. So 
I don't know if you have anything to add to this question or should we move to the next topic? Okay. I think it is that if I think it's really important as a conclusion that it's really important, of course, to obtain both the knowledge of both the languages. So it should be provided uh, what it's needed. Of course, that is, is like this, but it's difficult maybe sometimes to, it's more what you say is that it's a type of linguistic normalization policy and that it goes besides the, or farther than the, the, the job that we are doing you know, in trade union, okay, in, in, our, in our work. Okay, so we can move to topic two, since we have already covered topic four. So we go back to two. Um, so I wanted to question you about uh, what has been the relation between trade unions and employers. So we talked a bit about it when we were discussing the domestic workers. But in general, what, when facing the migration phenomenon in the labor market, uh, What's been the relation between your trade unions and the employers or the association of employers? Um, the, the tools that the trade unions have to, uh, to settle this relation with, with the employers are the law and the collective bargaining. So uh, if we talk about the law, the, the law that, that regulates the state here in the, of the immigrants here in Spain, the, the law from 2000, um, we will see that this law has an interpretation very instrumental or have an, an instrumental conception of immigrants insofar as they are seen as uh, that they come here to work and to cover the needs of the internal labor market. No? But something important is that this law, uh, sorry, going back. <laughs> so um, the trade unions, we defend, uh, we, we are a defense of organization of Im immigrant rights as workers, and even more considering that this law was modified in the night 2009 and recognizes foreigners the right to freely organize and join trade unions and to exercise the right to strike under the same conditions as the Spanish workers, regardless of their administrative status. Okay, so, uh, an immigrant in a irregular situation, administrative irregular situation, can be a, a, can can association to to the to the trade union can make a strike. So if there are no differences. In the talking about the statute of the workers, that is the law that includes the fundamental rights of workers in the is the, the legal text that regulates the, the, the labor relations. It says exactly in, with these words, the law will be applicable to workers who uh, voluntarily provide unpaid services, provide paid services within an, an organization or man management of another person called employer. So it doesn't speak of workers with a contract or workers with a residence authorization. Okay, so employment, the, the employment relationship uh, is determined by three things. One, the, that must exist, no? One, that the worker performs some, fun some functions. Two, that the worker does it with a schedule. And three, that the worker gets a salary for it. So if, this, if these three things exist, there is an employer, an employment relationship. And if there is an employer relationship, the law of the, empl the employer law, the status of, the, the, of workers cover the rights of this worker. Okay, and this is very important because it means that foreigner without permission and who work without a contract are also protected by the workers' statute. Okay, um, in fact, the immigration law contemplates several ways for people in an irregular situation to obtain an, an authorization to reside and work in Spain. And one of these, and I, I would like to talk about that. This in, in, in especially is called, I don't know exactly what the traduction to English is, but it's called something like labor, labor roots. I don't know if it exists in <laughs> the traduction. In Spanish, it's called arraigo laboral, labor roots, more or less, okay? This procedure consists in that the person must prove that has been living in Spain for at least two years with a registration, it means el empadronamiento, el padrón, 
and also that has been working for at least six months with a court ruling or a labor inspection certificate, okay? That means that using evidence, the person can prove to a judge that was working or can report his employer to the labor inspectorate. And if this employment relationship is proven, he could request a residence card. So this particular way of regularization was proposed by the trade unions in the social dialogue in Madrid, in the Spanish government a long time ago, and was agreed with the government as a way to bring to light situations of labor exploitation. Okay. Um, this task on um, protection of workers is developed by the trade unions through individual services like information, training, advice, and also from general actions, no? like campaigns, social dialogue, collective bargaining. And as well as migratory flows and process have been changing over the years, adapting to an increasingly increasive and globalized and accessible world and becoming a migratory more permanent, the trade unions have also adapted their role. They are not more only labor agents and have become agents of citizen integration, social agents, because they represent the citizenship as a whole in negotiation with the state on the matters related to, uh, to work and welfare. So um, one of the, how I said before, how, one of the principal tools that we have to negotiate with employers are the collective bargaining. For example, just to put some examples, um, we have been negotiation, negotiating that immigrants, for example, could have more free days to go to the funeral of a relative in their countries, for example, or the inclusion of the Feast of the Lamb as an unpaid permission day for Muslims, or how to face work during Ramadan in dangerous sectors such as construction. Okay, so the relation that trade unions and employers have is basically the collective bargaining. Yes, um, I, I think that this relationship uh, between uh, the trade union and the companies or employers in relation to immigration uh, is developed mainly through, uh, as my colleague said, uh, to in one instrument, the most important one, the collective bargaining. So it's uh, this type of, um, this instrument is recognized already in the constitution of 1978. And, um, through the collective bargaining, they, they, they establish they are established all the, the, the most the, the most important uh, labor rights and uh, conditions, uh, labor conditions in the, in the different sectors of act activity. So what we are doing is through this uh, collective bargaining, we introduce the different clauses related to migration. For example, clauses against uh, so discrimination, against racism, against xenophobia, or establish some uh, agreements also, or uh, yes, agreements in regarding so some leaves. What what Ma what Mariana said. So uh, saying so increase the days that we have for a leave because my my relative lives not in hundred kilometers, but thousand kilometers or, 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 or farther. So establish inside this collective bargaining also aspects related to migration. Okay, so that would be one of the most important instruments. Also in Comisiones Obreras, we have also done uh, what is called diversity management agreements. And they are, they are agreements uh, that we are uh, that we do with uh, a specific companies. So we, we, we uh, we have these uh, negotiations with a, a specific company and we establish some diversity or uh, non-discrimination agreements uh, with, the, with the company. Okay, we, we did with many different ones, especially in sectors where they have really uh, many workers uh, with, uh, from immigrant uh, immigrants, okay? So uh, it's also a really important instrument because maybe it can be more specific to the, the needs of the sector or the company, okay? And um, it's 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 a, a important job also. Um, also, the arrival laboral. Okay, I don't know in English. It's uh, it could be uh, uh, yes uh, arrival laboral. I don't know if you know it or, or not. It's a pity that we have to do it in this, in English this session <laughs> because it's more difficult. But arrival laboral is also an important important thing because it's a, a way to. Um, 
to, to yes to, to try to, to avoid or to, to, to yes to avoid some labor exploitation and trade union is they are really working hard on this on this on this issue okay by demanding the employers that they are doing this, this labor exploitation. Okay, and the people then, those people, then they can, when this is recognized, then they can access to a, to a residence permit. So it's really important in terms of, of work rights, uh, labor rights, and also um, migrant, all the rights of residence permit and everything. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you have introduced here the, um, the concept of diversity and how to deal from trade unions with uh, diversity of religion, of culture, and how to um, combine it with the, um, the workers' rights and how worker rights have to adapt to a diverse society. Uh, in this sense, um, you know, diversity is sometimes answered with uh, discrimination and with xenophobia from a part of society. So how have the trade unions that you represent uh, reacted to, to this outburst of xenophobia or to particular situations of discrimination in the place of work or, um, or I don't know, discrimination situations that you have found or your aff affiliated have, have found? Um, what what do you think on this matter? Mm, UGT and I think Comisiones Obreras too, we are part of a network that it's called, um, I don't know how to say it in English, um, La Charcha Contra el Racismo y la Xenophobia, that we are a group of, of, of trade unions that work against racism and xenophobia. To be honest, we as a union trade, we don't perceive the, the racism inside the companies. I mean, we don't have people that are right to us complain about racism and xenophobia. Of course, I suppose there are cases like this. Maybe they go to uh, some uh, associations, specialists in this kind of denunces like so racism, for example, maybe. But that's something that we, like a trade union, we do not perceive. What we do perceive is discrimination before getting into a job place. So, I mean, discrimination to access to the job places, no? for example. And uh, one of the tools that we have to fight against uh, xenophobia are workshops um, which object, which with the objective of breaking these rumors. Is this, is this a rumors? Hmm? The misconceptions and to give information or facts, numbers to, to the our to our uh, employees that are our representation of the workers. So they can fight and they can uh, pass this information also to their colleagues. So I think that's a good uh, a good way to also to to to, to fight against racism. Agree with her. I think one of the most important instruments is uh, that of uh, collective bargaining negotiation, also getting agreements uh, with, uh, as we, we said, because that is the way uh, that we establish, at least formally, all the things that they are, so that there is nothing that discriminates okay, workers for, from its origin. And at the same time, we need to do something more informal as workshops, campaigns that, that, uh, that prevent or fight against this, this type of, of situations. Um, I, I, I agree with her, it would be like this. Okay, perfect, thank you so much. Um, so do you have any question on this topic of diversity or anything you would like to clarify? Yep. Uh, in the front. Our experience is, more, is most of flexibility in a schedule, for example. There are companies that when people, if Muslims are in Ramadan, um, permit them to 
entry later, for example, to the to the job. Um, that's what you mean. Examples of. Most of the agreements are around the schedule and the times of, of work. I mean, that maybe to work uh, after some hours that the person could eat or when it's not so hot because in the last year, Ramadan has been always in summer. So it's been kind of <laughs> difficult for these people, but more or less most, in most of the cases are related to, fl uh, to flexibilization of the, of the, of the law of the, the company. I don't have any example of, of a business specific uh, issue, no, but it will be like this. So they have to, the thing is the important thing is that the representatives, the trade union representatives there, so they uh, um, negotiate, okay, an agreement that allows at least that it's something more flexible, okay, to adapt to the to these realities, okay. So at the end, no, in that case, on any other case, um, it's to adapt to the, the reality that we have in the in the company, okay. So probably it will be not be the, the best <laughs> solution, but yes, to establish small agreements that they can adapt, okay, the, the to the reality that we have with the different workers. And another example that came to my mind now is, for example, to make the vacations, the holidays on the period of the Ramadan, for example, no, because companies used to make um, um, holidays, I don't know, August, September, and maybe Ramadan is in July. So let these workers to make holidays during the Ramadan. Um, in the back, there was a question and then... Yes, um, I think, um, well, the first, always the first uh, most important thing when, 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 when a person comes to, to us, first, most of them, as I told you, in, for example, in Tite, 70% of the people we attend, they are in a regular situation. So most of the times we have to see, uh, always have to see which is the, the better way in order to, 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 to get a, a, a a residence permit for that, that person. Of course, there are many other things of that circumstances, personal circumstances of that person that affect, okay, its situation. Uh, or, or yes, its personal situation and also administrative. For example, in, in those cases of um, violence victims, okay, of, of uh, women that they suffer a gender violence, thank you, gender violence. So there is, for example, a special procedure Okay, to obtain a residence permit if you get a judicial re resolution that proves that you, that you are a victim okay, of this type of, of violence. So for example, we have to coordinate in those cases that we have many uh, cases of this with the uh, Barcelona City Council services, 
okay, that do this, this type of, so they get psychological help. So we, uh, we are in permanent contact, okay, from our, our, the lawyers and also the services in order to do a, like a, what I have explained to you before, like a holistic, okay, uh, work with that, with that person. Also, uh, in terms of discrimination, for example, if a person that, or the case you, you, you said that is trans and, for example, would also be a victim of a hate uh, direct also uh, in terms of residence permit, it would be, if not, we also, we can uh, send that person to a specific service, okay, or association. We always have the information of many associations and services so that we can always find a way for that person okay not only in terms of residence permit that's that's what we do but also in terms of um increasing or or uh, improving okay the circumstances of, of that person okay or another example is we have many people that they come to us and they they are having a this i don't know how it's in, in english in the south here um, Eviction. An eviction. Okay, so we always, or we also uh, have to have the, the the way, okay, to derive also this person to associations, uh, also legal, pre legal advice. So it's it's really uh, all the personal circumstances, as, as Mariana said, they they have an enormous influence, okay. And we always we, we do always the, the work for 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 legalize the person so to to obtain a residence permit, but many circumstances. They, they they are also there and we have to work with them okay um it's also i think uh interesting to know that uh in the cases of lgbt related uh, violence or people who emigrate from their countries because of this type of violence they might be el eligible for uh, refugee status so it's a ground for uh, granting refugee status so that I guess that in Sayeri also do this for certain people, it would be better to ask for refugee status exactly. and for certain yes. to ask for yes. a residence permit. If we, it depends on the case. Depends on the case. Once we, we see the person, then if we think that it could be a, a, asylum, a asylum seeker, then we, uh, we, 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 we tell that person that they have to go to another service. Okay, because in Sire, that is the, the service for uh, from Barcelona City Council, we have Pite is doing all uh, the, um, the things related to obtain a residence and work permit, okay, authorization, and there are other associations that they do all, all, all procedures related to uh, asylum seekers, okay, so then uh, you have to see and if they can do another way because it's better because of the personal circumstances or any circumstance, then we, we, we do it, of course. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, was there another question? In our case, um, AMIC doesn't have members. I mean, we are like an NGO. We are open to all the public that needs our services. The trade, the, the trade union, the UGT, they have affiliados, it's called in Spanish, affiliated uh, persons. And if you want to be an affili uh, a part of the, of the trade union, you have to pay, a, of course, a, a payment that is I don't know how much, I don't remember it, <laughs> but it's a quantity every year. Anyway, the services that the trade union offer to the workers are 
always open to anybody, to everybody. I mean, it's not necessary to that you have to be a member to get uh, the services to, of course, if you are a member, you have some discounts and this kind of stuff, but the services are always open to, to every worker. Yes, Commissioners Obreras is, is the same. Two different things. CITE, as AMIC, they are uh, working as an NGO, so there are no members, union members, and it's a, a public service. It's uh, it's financed by public funds, so any no one is paying anything for the service and neither for for being part of it because we don't have members. But for Comisiones Obreras, yes, it's a trade union. It's it's based on the unionists. Okay, so it's members. They pay a quote. Okay, every uh, three months. So I don't remember. You you have to pay a quote. Always the um, immigrant, so the services based on immigration law for migrants are for free always. And the uh, um, labor assessment that we also have in Comisiones Obreras, always it's a service that you have to pay. Okay, so it's really different. The, the work for in, based on immigration laws than the work done by the trade union for general uh, members and general population. Okay, in, in terms of labor markets and, and labor demands and everything. Um, was there a question down yep, in the back? Uh, in AMIG, we usually uh, attend mm, more than the mm, more than half the, of the persons that we attend are women. I mean, so we attend more women than men. And um, in our case, is easier easier. Let under <laughs> Donald understood me to get a residence permit to the women to women because the labor market of working um, domestic workers is more accessible with you don't have papers when you don't have the, the permission, uh, no, the residence card. So I don't want to say that most, but more of the, of the procedures that we do to get documentation is for women. In training, there's not too much difference between women and men. That was the question. For us, it's the same. Okay, uh, also around sixty percent of, of the of people we attend are women. Okay, most of so the, the basic profile we attend is women from Latin America and that is working as a domestic worker. Okay, so um, at, and that it has an irregular administrative status. Okay, so at the end, all the most of the procedures we are doing. It's uh, to, to, to obtain the, the residence and work authorization for, the, for these persons, for these people, okay. Um, it's true that it can be also, it's sometimes it's possible that men uh, get access before to, 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 the, the, to the labor market and afterwards women, but I think it depends on, on, on every case and I don't have statistics about this, I could say you, that in our case, we attend more women and we do more procedures related to, to women, maybe because of the sector we, we work most of it.
if that people is is there yeah. participating usually i guess that is the, the the representative of the of the of the union who is uh, doing the the, the the agreement the negotiation with the with the employer or the with the, with the company but this representative already has all the immigration uh, elements or principles that we that we work in the trade union okay in order to then when they have to to negotiate with uh, with the company okay to include all these uh, elements okay Answering to this um, is what we said before that also, uh, of course, we have apart from the department that we have that is the um, immigration department inside the trade union. Also, many unionists, so many members, they are from different origins. So, and they participate also in all these uh, departments, creating, creating the, those policies, negotiations, everything, of course. Uh, okay, so if there are no more questions regarding this topic, we will move to the last one, uh, which is in regards of uh, the relation between trade unions and the Catalan institutions and the administration and political parties. So um, from your experience in, in UGT and in Comisión de Obreras, um, uh, what kind of support have you received by the political elite, by the different political parties? Do you clearly receive more support from leftist parties or is this uh, separation already a bit, um, not that clear as it was in the past and maybe now it's more a matter of, of, of diplomacy that all political parties engage with, with trade uh, unions or what is your experience on, on that matter? On, on our case, um... The responsible of the participation on the tables of social dialogue in Madrid is UGT from Madrid, obviously. Okay, so um, our entity, AMIC, uh, sometimes in our behalf and sometimes on behalf of the UGT of Catalonia, we place an important role of institutional participation in which it, we collaborate with the autonomous, the locals, and the regional administrations in the definition of the migratory policies and uh, of its competences and the execution. Of course, that it depends on the color of the party. <laughs> when you work with parties from the left, is the dialogue is much more easier than when you have a government from the right. No? For example, this is uh, obviously seen or something that is more, cl um, more clear in Madrid, more than here in Catalonia. But in Madrid, it's always uh, the same. I mean, with uh, PP, for example, Partido Popular is in the government, the table dialogue is almost closed. There's no mm, dialogue. Uh, when it's a Partido Socialista, like now, there is a more easier communication. No? Here, una, uh, here is important to mention that uh, Catalonia was the first autonomous community to have competences in, in, in immigration matters included in the Statute of Autonomy of 2006. I mean, before that time, all the competences in, my, in immigration are or were in Madrid to the government, central government. And since this status of autonomy, Catalonia got some competences. For example, the article, uh, the article 138 of the status of Catalonia mentioned that the competences of the Catalan government in matters of immigration are the creation and development of reception and integration policies for immigrants. I mean, all uh, the integration is in the Catalan's hands and the resolution of work authorizations that foreigners whose employment relationship takes place in Catalonia. What does it mean that, for example, a person that only has a, a, permit, a residence permit, but not a work permit, if he lives in Catalonia and get a, a job and wants to ask for this permit of work, has to do it in front of the Catalonia government. If you live, I don't know, in Sevilla, you will have to do it until Madrid's government. <laughs> okay, so it's a different level of administration. So AMIC, uh, we participate, for example, in the citizenship and, and, and immigration table. It's, it's called in, in Catalan is de la taula de ciudadanía e inmigración de la, of, the, of the Catalonian government. We also participate in the municipal council of immigration of Barcelona and in different tables and commissions of 
various municipalities around all Catalonia. Thank you so much. Uh, Anna, would you like to give us yes. uh, an example of Commission de Breda? Okay, so first of all, uh, the most important thing to know uh, is that FITE is financed 100% by public funds. Okay, so that is what allows us to, to, to offer a public uh, completely free legal service and, and do all the, the, uh, the managing, uh, carrying out all the procedures, okay, in public. And um, we have, uh, we receive subsidies from different levels of from different administrations, okay? Basically, nowadays we receive subsidies and funding from uh, Generalitat, okay, the, the regional government, also from different municipalities and Diputaciones, which are like the, the union of different uh, municipalities, okay? These three different levels, uh, they, they finance us. In this sense, uh, with this uh, public funds, we really, uh, it's important to, to acknowledge the, the effort, okay, that many of these administrations, especially at the local level, uh, have, uh, have done in order to maintain, okay, this support to us during many, many years, okay, because sometimes they, they have also, especially at the local level, many difficulties in order to so to have these this, this, this funds uh, for the crisis, economic crisis okay, that we had like uh, 15 years ago. Until now, we, they had really many, many difficulties. And also that there have been many cuts okay, on this financial uh, support uh, from the state and for, from the regional government. So, and the uh, local entities always, uh, so they have supported us uh, until, until now, okay? Um, so this funding, this public funding, is what explains all the 30 years of theater that, 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 we, that we have had, okay? And also, um, many associations, okay, uh, have uh, given support to, to Cite as well, okay, uh, like NGOs and, and, and like this. And, um, well, in relation with the um, relation between or Comisiones Obreras and the institutions, okay, that, uh, that we have with this, this relation, it's important to, uh, maybe the most important thing is the capacity we have as a, um, a main trade union to participate in the drafting of legislation, okay, so in, in migration issues. So this maybe it's one of the most important things uh, that, that we, we have to, to, to tell about uh, this relation between institutions and, and trade unions. Um, at the state level, uh, we participate at the Tripartite Labour Commission on Immigration that depends on the uh, Migration Ministry in, in Madrid, okay? Uh, so we, we, we participate always in this, in this commission. Also, at a uh, regional level here in, in Catalonia, we participate in the Bureau of Citizenship and Immigration, okay, in the Establa de Ciudadanía. And um, also in the different, at the local level, we participate in different, in the different municipalities where we, where we work. And also, especially in the, we participate in the Consell Municipal de Immigración de Barcelona, okay, it's like the Immigration Council of the Barcelona City Council, okay. And we have participated in uh, giving many proposals, different proposals, when they have to start legislating uh, on, on, uh, on immigration, okay? Um, I think this is, uh, is one of the most important works, okay, of the trade juniors, of the main trade juniors in, in Spain, because they really have a, uh, the capacity to influence, okay, uh, the legislation, okay? So I think that would be the, the most important thing. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, in this sense, you have mentioned like your influence in the in legislation and the negotiation of laws and amends. Um, before you, Mariana, you mentioned the immigration law and how there are many claims uh, that ask for it to be removed completely. But it's true that that it's not adapted or it's not flexible enough to the current reality. But how do you think? it could be modified or what do you think are the most urgent modifications to adapt it to, to this new reality and this new situation of diversity in, in Catalonia? One of the most important things that we have that the law must change 
are the, the requisitos, requirements related with job. No, for example, uh, the persons need a one year job contract job. Probably here in Spain, to one person that is unemployed will be very difficult to find a contract of one year. No, for example, why I why the law uh, claims to an an, uh, uh, an immigrant and one year uh, contract is too is too long. Or for example, um, it's, it's hard to explain this because when you are a couple of an Spanish people, for example, okay, you have a husband or a wife. You are under under another law that is not that immigration law. I don't know if here we have students from law 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 students or not, but well, there's another law that is called régimen comunitario that is an application to all communitary people. Okay, in this case, for example, the the requirements are also labor. I mean, the Spanish member of the couple must have money or must have been working, even though if they are married, for example. Okay, so. If I got married with a guy that is from Spanish and he doesn't have work, I cannot get a permission to live here in Spain with my husband. So, I'm, I mean, it's, it has no sense because sometimes laws are thinking from a perspective that is not the right one, no? For example, because this law has been thought for another community persons that come to live to Spain, Italians, French, Germans, okay? So what the law says, okay, if you want to come to live to Spain, you can come, you can bring your wife that is from another third country, but you have to maintain your family here. If you cannot, then you can go back to your country, Italy, France, or Germany, okay? But if the communitarian member of the couple is a Spanish, you cannot tell this Spanish, go to another place <laughs> and look a fine, and find a job in another place and go with your husband or go out with your wife i mean we have to rethink all the law okay because this law is not uh, is not actual uh, useful for the people for the new conditions of life in the world no because now the world is globalized couples are mixed uh, most of the couples are from different countries so we have to readapt this conception of the law too Thank you so much, Anna. What's your perspective on it? Um, we also think that the, the law needs to be modified, okay, in many different aspects. Um, first of all, I think Mariana uh, uh, told this before that when the the, um, the law, the immigrant law, now the Ley de Estrangería uh, was approved, okay, that, that now it's uh, the, the now that it's um, vigente. Uh, Okay, well, the law that we have now today, okay, that the law we have now, it was approved in a moment that it was in the 2000, it was approved in a moment that it was a really economic uh, growth in Spain, okay. So it was created more to manage all the um, non-native workers or, or, or the migrant uh, workers that arrive in Spain to um, more than maybe to establish or recognize rights to migrants, okay. So it was uh, created in a in a in a moment to do to um, to solve the problem that we had or a, a circumstances that we had in that moment. But nowadays we have a different situation and they don't have changed it. Okay, so from 2000 until 2021, is many things have changed. Okay, in Comisiones Obreras, we think that different things should be done in order to um, have so that migrants have better uh, or they improve their rights okay uh, first thing first important thing is a uh, in depth reform of the of uh, immigration law spanish immigration law uh, one important thing to modify is to reduce the time people need to stay in spain without the residence permit in order to obtain to get a residence permit, okay? It's called arraigo social, okay? It's a type of procedure, very used, uh, one of the most uh, used. And in order to obtain or to apply for this type of uh, residence and work permit, you need to comply with some requirements. The first requirement is to be three years in Spain in an irregular status, 
okay? So that affects uh, enormously the life and the, um, the daily life of, of people, okay? To be three years without uh, documentation until you can obtain a resident permit. And you not only have to be three years without documents, you have to obtain a job offer of one year duration, okay? So there are some requirements that sometimes when I have to tell this to the people they come to, to see me, I don't want to say this because it's real, okay? Sometimes it's, it's really uh, too much, okay? So one thing it should be to reduce this time, okay? Also reduce the time of the job offer um, requested. Also, we think that it, it, it's necessary to reduce the requirements uh, to renew your residence or work permit, especially the work permit, okay? Because once you obtain this after three years, after obtaining a, a job, if you don't uh, work minimum six months and you have a job offer or a job contract in the moment you renew your residence permit, it's possible that they, they deny the, the, the renovation. So it's sometimes it's really easy to, to again uh, fall in the, in the regular status. Okay, so these two things are, we think they are really important. And also maybe in some sectors from, uh, sorry, as the, the social uh, like domestic service sector. So some sectors for their uh, specificities, uh, they, they should maybe be uh, established some, some elements or in the, in, the, in the law, okay, for them. The second thing um, it's to improve also the functioning of the administration, okay, because it's not possible that once you comply all the requirements, then we have to wait six, seven, eight months in order to obtain a response, okay? A resolution of, 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 of what you are asking for. So this is really important. Also, uh, some procedures in the police, also they are taking so, so long. So it's also important not to have the rights written in a law. So also that once I can exercise those rights that they can be exercised in, in a... In a more or less uh, fast, or not fast, but at least uh, what the, the law says, okay? What the law establishes, nowadays it establishes in three months, they have to be resolved all the, all the applications and they are doing the, the double time, okay? Another thing is to fight discrimination in, more, in a more informal way, so campaigns and everything, workshops, because sometimes in law, uh, we have it correctly, uh, but correct, but we are still, have many discriminations in order to access to a job because uh, I'm from another country, I have another religion. So it's also important, all we, 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 we have already explained about this. Uh, so uh, campaigns, okay, to, to, to avoid this. And uh, finally, also a basic training on labor rights, okay, because that we, we said also before, for example, in domestic workers sometimes, they don't know exactly which, which are the, the rights, okay? So it's important to, to always have this, this type of, of, of training that they know all the, the rights and they know what they can do if there is a, a situation of labor exploitation, everything. So uh, information is really, really important also because uh, maybe sometimes we don't do things because we don't know what we can do, okay? Or that we have the right to do it. But this is also really important that they that we have the, the information to, to to act, okay? And that that's good. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions regarding this topic. Um, would you like to? Can I add something? Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about this, uh, the, the claims. No, I mean the, un the the trade unions not only can influence in the development of the laws. On the, on the social dialogue, but we also have the power of being an observatory. So in, in talking about migration, I told before that we attend around 2000 people every year. So it's a lot of people and you can know from the first, in the first hand, what are their needs? What is the problem with the law? So it's important for us to take this, to, to be this observatory and as a trade union, we also have the claim, uh, sorry, the, the capacity to mobilize the, the society. No? And you, uh, I, don't, I suppose, do you know who is Pepe Mujica? He had a phrase that I really like it and I wanted to, to end my participation here with this. He's, he said that the laws are a static photograph of a social moment from the past. It's exactly what we were talking about before the law, 
and then no, the, the, the immigration law. And society uh, oversees telling our leaders that the time has passed and the time in, is time to update. So I think that we like, since the, from the trade union and from our entities, AMIC, we have this capacity of telling the politics that the time has changed and we have to move on. <laughs> what do you think are the perspective on, on modifying this law and of having a, a change of paradigm in the, in the legal sense? No. No, we don't have perspective <laughs> of any changes now. I mean, there is not open any possibility of change at all. Really, possi real possibility. Um, yes, um, I think that the law is not also, I agree with her. Um, it's really difficult to, to have a perspective. <laughs> it's uh, really real to have a, a close, at least close, okay? Um, but, um, there, are, there have been in the last year some, ch some changes, okay, some modifications in the law that they have also been important, maybe really uh, for some sectors, okay, but uh, they have been important because they, it has been a, really, a, real, a real change for those people that they, they've been affected by, by these changes. Uh, I will try to explain it. I, I, don't prepare, I did not prepare this, but I will try to explain it in English, okay? <laughs> One is, um, all the people, all the all minors that arrive, okay, in Spain while they were minors without their family, okay, and they were um, uh, covered by the public services, okay. For all those minors, uh, the law established uh, that they have to obtain a residence permit, so that the government has to obtain uh, uh, apply for a residence permit for for those minors, okay. But the problem uh, arrived when they were uh, already um, they they were they had 18 years old, okay. So in that moment, they most of them because of some uh, elements of the law, they lose, okay. They could not renew their residence permit. So it was a really important, uh, uh, really um, uh, a problem for those uh, for those uh, people because they had a. Uh, regular uh, status and at the uh, when I am I have 18 and I can uh, start working and doing everything I lose my 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 residence permit and they lose it and they did not have they never had a work authorization so they they could uh, live here but they could not work okay so it was a really difficult situation for them and uh, on November uh, a new so they modified the the law Okay, and they have really, uh, I think they, they have um, improved uh, all this, all this uh, regulation, okay, and now they can obtain a residence permit and a work authorization at the same time with uh, complying really uh, with some requirements, but they, they are much more flexible, okay, so many, many, many um, uh, young uh, people that they were here, uh, they have uh, been able to have a to, to obtain a residence permit in the last months, and I I, I think and I, it will be like this in the following months. More and more, they will obtain a, a, a an administrative uh, so a regular a status, okay, and a work authorization, which I think it's it's really important. So this has been one of uh, the, the the modifications that I think they are important. And also another one is that the, the parents of, of, of um, minors that have the Spanish citizenship, okay, now uh, since uh, for since uh, last year, they obtain a five years duration uh, residence and work permit. Before it was one year only, and it was really difficult to keep to maintain this 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 uh, this residence. So I think. There are some small uh, modifications that they are improving a little bit, okay? But uh, we need a really uh, maybe a in-depth, uh, okay, modification of, of the law. But we have some some small things that, that they are. Change comes slowly, but it comes, so it's not negative. Uh, to wrap up the the session, there's still some perspective, at least. Um, I don't know if you would like to add anything, some final remarks or no. Or what about the the audience? I don't know if there yeah. is any question? Any question or yep.
всех в школе. Or citizenship, to, so that you have to do an exam, and it's a, for example, the language, the language exam. You do the Catalan, despite of Spanish language. I, I don't think, no, I don't, I don't have information about this, but I, I think um, at least citizenship is a Spanish one. You, you will always need to to have the Spanish language, and maybe another one of the official, co-official languages. Okay, Euskera, Catalan. Okay, but but only the Catalan. I don't think from now it will it would be possible. Okay, I don't have information about this, but I don't think so. It's I think it's also a really political matter. So um, at the end of the day, um, Spanish nationality depends on on the Spanish government, and I don't think that would be eager to to do these modifications. Maybe it would be a way to to ease the the path, as as you were saying before, for some migrants who find it maybe easier to, to learn Catalan or have more resources to learn it. So it might be a really good uh, modification towards national, uh, towards the Spanish nationality, but I don't think we're any close to, to that modification. <laughs> Talking about the modification of the procedure of the uh, Spanish citizenship, for example, Something that we've been reclaiming for a long time is the modification of the constitution, the Spanish constitution, and what says about the right of vote from, Im from immigrants. Because immigrants, uh, immigrants cannot vote in Spain. For general, I mean, for presidents, not ni and not for the, gover the local government, for example, for Catalonia. So we never, immigrants will never be able to vote only can vote for municipalities and only can vote the communitarian uh, immigrants from other countries of Europe and persons who came from 12 countries with which with Spain has a um, convenio, um, an agreement to vote in both countries. Okay, so the, the, the propor proportion of people, ex uh, immigrants that vote really is so low that is not even 0, 0,001. I mean, it's nothing because it's not easy. And it's not fair that uh, an immigrant can be living here for 10, 20 years and cannot have the right to vote. So this is something that we've been claiming, but we know that it's very difficult because it's not a law, it's a constitution. So it must be modified, modified that constitution and it's very, very, very hard in the more than 40 years that have our constitution, it's been modified only two times. It's also in, in its whole history. So, and we know that it's hard, but it, it's not impossible. Do you have any other questions or comments you would like to make or? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, are there students, but uh, are, are law students or not? It's uh, migration studies. Migration studies, okay. Okay. Social sciences, okay. 
Okay, so. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Mariana Isla and Ana Tomas, for, for coming and talking to us and explaining to us. And thank you all for attending.